Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the November Garden Checklist video. I do one of these uh, each month. There is a video from last year in November that may be a little more detailed overall than this one will be because this year I've really concentrated on what I'm doing in my own garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. And as you can see, I am completely surrounded by uh, plants uh, to plant uh, here in 7B in Raleigh. Uh, we can just continue to you know to, to plant things and i've got several upcoming uh one day landscape jobs if you followed my channel um, i do these uh jobs that i call one day landscape jobs they're jobs that's where you can make a pretty big difference in a small space in a single day um if you follow along with the channel you can see how these uh these pieces go in the ground but again uh here uh november is a great time to be putting woody ornamental plants in the ground that are hardy in your area. And I want to stress that um, as long as the plant is hardy, well hardy in your area, uh, this is a great time of year to be putting them in the ground. Uh, I wouldn't try to put marginal things in the ground. So if you're testing the boundaries of a plant that will grow in your area, that's probably best done in the spring. Beyond hardy shrubs and trees, we can also plant uh, hardy perennials. So things like hellebores, this would be a great time of year if you could locate them uh, to put those in the ground and in literally any kind of hosta or anything, any really hardy perennial, even the things that go to sleep. They can, they're perfectly fine going in the ground this time of year. The other things I'm working on out here are here in zone seven, um, you know, we can plant pansies uh, and uh, Johnny jump ups and violas and panolas. I've got dianthus that I'm in the process of planting right now that they don't, they'll bloom a little bit through the winter, but then getting themselves rooted in uh, by early spring, they go absolutely crazy. They'll look great until almost June uh, here in my uh, Raleigh, North Carolina landscape. And snapdragons as well. Same thing on the snapdragons. Uh, during the warmer times, during the winter, I'll have some flowers on them, but come early spring, uh, up through mid-spring and almost until um, early summer. These will just shine uh, in the garden. I'm planting things in containers uh, that, are, that are at least a zone or two hardier than my area. So as an example of that, this variegated boxwood is hardy up to zone five uh, and I'm in zone seven. So I'm confident uh, that my uh, variegated boxwood can sit outside here. Uh, my, uh, there's some ornamental cabbage and kale, and there's some uh, violas uh, in that container. Same thing with my uh, cryptomeria here. It's hardier than my area. Same thing with this yew. Anything that's marginally hardy or barely hardy in my area needs to come in the house. And so uh, this is the time of year we're going to be taking in house plants, and uh, this is the time of year we're going to be uh, rescuing uh, tubers like dahlias if you want to keep your dahlias until next year. I'm in zone seven, I'm right on the edge of that. So those of you who are watching this video who are in zones three, four, five, six, seven, uh, if you wanna save your dahlias, you do need to uh, dig them up. Um, in zone seven where I'm at, sometimes they come back and sometimes they don't. It will just be winter dependent. Those of you who are in eight and nine, you can keep them in the ground. There are other bulbs as well, um, like elephant ears uh, and uh, caladiums that you'll want to, uh, if you put them in the ground, if you wanna keep them, it's time to uh, rescue them. Good girl, stay right there, okay? Can you stay right there? Okay, all right, so this is definitely the time of year to be planting garlic. I put up a video a couple days ago at the time you see this, uh, putting some garlic in the ground, and I actually just plant it in my landscape beds. It doesn't necessarily need to go in the vegetable garden, um, but you can see how I planted it in a, you know, in a video I'll link up here in the, uh, in the corner. Uh, bowl planting time is coming up, and um, this is very specific to what type of bulb it is. Here in zone seven, I really need to cold treat my tulips, so I'm in the process of cold treating tulips in the refrigerator uh, at this time. If you follow the channel, you'll see how, how these go in. I have an entire playlist on the channel called Bulbs if you want to go through that playlist and see when, I've, when I'm planting them in the spring, uh, how I'm handling them in the fall, but hyacinths and tulips I'm cold treating most of the rest of them as I receive them, and I get most of my bulbs from color blends. Um, I, you know, I'll put them in the ground. Nice thing about color blends is they'll typically send them to you at the time. It's either time to refrigerate them, and they'll tell you that, or um, it's the time for them to go in the ground. Beyond garlic, it's also onion planting time. Shallots, Jim's not a big onion fan, um, but uh, it is time to plant onions. Uh, I did all of my cool season vegetables from seed uh, in the house uh, earlier, I, I don't know, it's probably been two months now, and then you can see they've been in the ground for 
a little over a month. Um, this is um, kohlrabi, kale, broccoli, lettuce. Uh, all those things are, are looking fantastic. I do protect them here with a uh, with a netting that keeps the uh, rabbits from uh, <laughs> from enjoying them as well. Uh, but all this is looking fantastic. It's not too late in zone seven, eight, nine. Uh, if you can find the plants on uh, on these things, I think it's way too late. To probably start them from seed, and maybe maybe down in zone nine, you you still have a little bit of time to do that. But but if you can find plants, lettuce is super easy, and lettuce can be grown in bowls as well. If you just want to put it in a in a in a shallow bowl with some potting soil, uh, on super cold nights, you can just bring that bowl inside and then put it back out in the sun uh, the following day when it warms back up. But um, you can get a lot of mileage uh, out of uh, out of lettuce that way. Uh, one thing, if you still have any of your summer vegetables in place, you can still collect the seed on it. I've got some <laughs> uh, 10 foot tall okra uh, back here that uh, uh, is a very old variety that I'm saving the seed on. So I'm just letting those uh, dry out a little bit. So, but, um, but if you still have your tomatoes, peppers, any of that in the garden, and uh, you still can uh, collect the seed and save it uh, through, the, through the winter. That's one interesting component to all the new gardeners now uh, from 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 the last year and a half is that uh, I, I see frequently now when I'm ordering seeds that they're out of lots and lots of things so uh, I would be go go ahead and be thinking about your spring garden now uh, for whatever tomatoes and anything you're going to do from seed from next year I would go ahead and order it and I've actually already done that myself here's another angle of all the greens looking absolutely fantastic uh, if the temperature dipped down below 32 um, I do have a frost protection blanket that I can throw over the top of uh, of, the, of these greens uh, a lot of them are hardy enough Th things like collards uh, and the kale are actually hardy enough to take minor freezes but uh, in order to get the most mileage out of them there's probably a few nights here in November that if I cover you know maybe three nights the whole month if I cover these um, I, I'll have them growing well into December in all of these monthly checklist videos I talk about shopping for plants at different times of the year. So you can have interest in your landscape different times of the year. If you just go in the spring every year and buy things that are in flower, your landscape ends up with lots of flowering things every spring and not a lot the rest of the year. Um, here in zone seven, definitely in zone eight and nine, there are things that we can have either for foliage color or for flowers or for uh, bark. There's all kinds of winter interest things that we can find. So again, I, I like to shop this time of year or go to arboretums, botanical gardens, that kind of thing. As an example, right here, um, right at the beginning of November, or the end of October, this uh, Farfugium has just come into a full flower. Great, great perennial plant that, um, that the pollinators absolutely love. Uh, backing up from that, uh, this mojo pittosporum, this is an example of a gold or variegated evergreen plant that will look like this um, all winter long. Uh, you know, that, that could be found and, 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 and added this time of year. There's a, uh, a Florida sunshine elysium back here. It's going to look like this all winter long. Uh, here's a uh, camellia, and I have lots and lots of camellias in the landscape. Uh, this one's called Early Wonder. It's actually a Camellia japonica that blooms in the fall, which is kind of kind of interesting. Most of these bloom after the first of the year, but I just kind of want to show you that this is an example of having interest in the garden well beyond the time that you think you might be able to. So as things go dormant, uh, that is the time of year that we can transplant things. If you've got shrubs in places that you, you need to move them, uh, winter is a good time to do that. If they're super well established, you can go around them in November and just cut the roots in a circle. You know, you can go around, like I'm, I'm gonna be moving this butterfly bush. I can go around this butterfly bush and just, and just cut the roots, but leave the plant in place uh, and just root prune it. And then wait a couple of months and then come back in and move it. It seems to uh, relieve some of the pressure. I've shown that in, in an older video, moving a giant camellia. And camellias are, um, can be, can be kind of hard to move. So if you're following the channel, you'll see me move this uh, large butterfly bush at that time. Let's move on to uh, pruning because this is a great example of uh, a pruning. Uh, normally we talk about pruning butterfly bushes in late winter or early spring before they come back up. This butterfly bush has such heavy, has a lot of material on the top of it here. It's so full. If you lived in an area with snow or ice, I might consider going ahead and taking some of this off 
Okay, don't cut it down hard. But I look at a plant like this that I know I'm gonna cut back at the end of winter normally. And if I thought it was gonna have ice on it, uh, I'd probably take some of this branching off of it. But overall pruning throughout your landscape, I don't prune back my perennials that have seeds on top of them. That's gonna be things like black-eyed Susans, echinacea, that kind of thing, because the seeds are good for the birds. Uh, I don't cut back woody perennials like this butterfly bush down to the ground because they actually have hollow stems and water can get down in there. That's why I actually wait to the late winter. You can, like I said, relieve a little bit of the weight off the top of it. And I don't prune any flowering shrubs right now unless you know exactly what you have because a lot of your flowering shrubs already have the flower buds on them. Azaleas are a prime example of that. My lower petalum over here is a prime example of that. So. Uh, if you don't know what you have, you're safe pruning your flowering plants after they flower. Otherwise, leave them alone. Your evergreen plants and your uh, conifers, um, Christmas tree type plants. Uh, if you prune those heavily now, keep in mind you got to live with whatever that looks like for the rest of the winter. So typically I wait even on those things until February just because I don't want to look at a butchered uh, plant all winter long. If you have big planting plans in the late winter, early spring, uh, you might want to be marking where uh, your perennials are that are going to sleep so you don't end up damaging them uh, in the process of those jobs. Also, as you're planting bulbs, and I'll be planting lots of bulbs here in November, you might want to mark those as well uh, just may, or draw a map of some kind. That way, it's very easy to forget, you know, to go to a garden center in the spring, buy a plant and you know, or, or, or during the winter and come back and dig up your bulbs by accident. So uh, keep that in mind. Let's move on and talk about uh, these pesky leaves uh, that everybody rakes out of their yards <laughs> this time of year onto the street and lets the city come and, and take them away. Uh, leaves are fantastic uh, ground cover. Um, if, if you want to, you can put them through, through some sort of leaf shredder or take them to your driveway, run the lawnmower over them several times, break them up, and then put them back in the garden space. And uh, um, they're great mulch. And, you know, I'm not going to do anything with these red bud leaves that have fallen off this tree. If the leaves are diseased, um, hydrangea macrophyllas like this one next to me can a lot of times get um, foliar issues. Uh, if I, so, if I, you know, if, if the leaves are diseased, I will dispose of those. But for the most part, leaves are a friend. Um, do watch over the course of the winter, though, because sometimes the wind will blow lots of leaves up against just a few plants. We'll trap them. You can go back and clean that up a little bit. You don't want stuff buried in you know, a foot and a half of them. But uh, you know, keeping the ground covered is super, super important. And whether that you do that with the leaves that fall this time of year or hardwood mulch or bark, however you want to go about that, even compost uh, works for that, is super important. It regulates moisture. It regulates heat. Uh, and it's great for weed prevention as well. That's super important here um, toward the end of fall. This is the time of year that chickweed and henbit uh, germinate. And they, they, if, if you've had experience with this, that stuff goes absolutely crazy uh, in February and March. And it's, like I say, it's in the process of actually germinating now. So having the ground covered, super important. If you're not doing a winter garden like I have over here, make sure you get your vegetable garden covered as well. You can take the leaves that are falling in your other parts of your landscape and pile them pretty generously in that um, and it will, become, it will improve the soil in your vegetable garden over the course of the winter. I have a warm season turf type. Uh, this is a zoysia grass and it will go dormant in the winter. So there's really not anything for me to be doing uh, going into winter at this point, except for leaf removal. I don't want any leaves piling up on it. You can see there's a few around me right now, no big deal, but uh, I definitely, I need to keep those cleaned off because um, that will cause me a problem, just matting down and it will keep the, uh, keep, especially while it's dormant, it will keep it too wet and it will definitely kill spots uh, in my lawn. So that's really the only thing I'm gonna be doing on my turf. If you have cool season turf, it's probably not too late to be overseeding it and in the south, overseeding it and, and uh, putting down some sort of winter fertilizer uh, as well if you need that. Uh, watering uh, this time of year can be uh, can kind of be all over the place um, we had a very heavy rain uh, two nights ago and so i won't have to do any watering for a while with these cooler nights and shorter days the rain that you do get lasts a long time okay but with that said if i go a week or two without water the the newer things that i've planted you know the annuals like the pansies and the snapdragons and the dianthus that i've shown you and and other things 
uh, bulbs, even bulbs that I'm putting in the ground, uh, any shrubs that I'm planting this time of year. If you go two weeks um, in this very dry fall air, uh, things can really dry out. So do keep an eye on watering. But also, again, whatever watering you do and whatever rain you get tends to last a bit longer. November's the time to be thinking about tool maintenance. Uh, if you've got power equipment, you know, your lawnmower as an example, if you're leaving fuel in it, you might want to pour a little bit of fuel stabilizer in it, or at least, or run the gas out completely is probably even a better idea. If you want to go ahead and sharpen blades, uh, sh get, get hand tools sharpened, any of those kinds of things so you're prepared uh, when the winter is over with those types of things. November's a great month to be doing hardscaping, so sidewalks, retaining walls, fencing projects, all of those kinds of things. It's cool outside. It's a much easier, less stress uh, work uh, this time of year. I'm going to be building a fence on the back side of this property here before the end of the year. The only other really maintenance thing I'm doing in the landscape in November is I will fertilize some of these newly planted annuals. So these, you know, the pansies and the snapdragons and dianthus and some of these things I've shown you, some of these newly planted things I have in containers, I'll give a small amount of fertilizer to my vegetable garden over there and nothing else. Uh, everything else will be fertilized at the end of winter. I don't, don't do any fertilizing on shrubs and trees and perennials right now that are in the ground because we don't want to have them grow at all or think it's a different season. So let them, let them go dormant on their own. If you have an irrigation system, make sure you're taking off the backflow preventer before we get a hard freeze. Make sure if you have drip irrigation, you can use an air compressor and blow the water out of the lines in your drip irrigation. So that's it. That's pretty much uh, all of my, uh, my maintenance tips for uh, November. If you have anything that I have forgotten in this video that would be helpful to others, leave that comment down below. And thank you guys for following along with these monthly checklists, and I'll be back in December with another one. Thanks for watching.